Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about the very best comic books that you can buy this week. We don't want you wasting any of your money. And if you're an Image Comics fan, you're having a pretty damn good week. If you're a DC or Marvel fan, maybe not so much. And here to talk to me about that is Drew from Comics Lead. How you doing, Drew? I'm doing great, Wes. Yeah, it's uh, another down week for DC and Marvel. I think it's like three weeks in a row now. But uh, I can guarantee you next week is going to be on the up on the up and up. But this week, there's still some good stuff. So let's talk about that good stuff this week. Yes, Image Comics accounts for all of our indie comic book recommendations, five in total. Me, personally, I'm highly recommending Nightclub number one from Image Comics, Mark Millar, Juan and Ramirez on this one. This one got some publicity for being like the first $2 comic book to come out in quite some time it's what if a vampire that was also a luchador wanted to be a superhero i can get down with that there's a lot of world setting right here it's very similar to our world but there's certainly some differences to it but once it picks up the pace we get a killer montage about becoming a vampire and then he decides he's going to be a superhero i thought it was a lot of fun for two bucks you're never going to do better than this you get the bang for your buck with this comic Art is solid. Story is solid. There's, I mean, there's nothing bad about it at all. It's a great setup book for this world and this kid becoming a vampire, learning the rules and everything. And yeah, that you get what you pay for. It's all right there. I cannot help. I cannot do anything but recommend this book. You have to check this out. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully people went out there and maybe didn't spend all their money on Batman and Spawn and went for a little bit more quality with nightclub number one. Mark Miller knocks it out of the park once again. Sticking with Image Comics, we got the final issue of Starhenge, The Dragon of the Boar, issue number six, Liam Sharp writing and illustrating here. And I didn't think Liam Sharp could do this, Drew. I did not think that he'd get to the final issue and actually tie together all of his plot lines for any of this stuff to make sense. It felt like he had gone in three different timelines. Yes, he had started connecting some things, but I didn't know that he could get the job done and really nail the landing. And I was quite happy. In fact, I think he nailed the landing with a 10 out of 10. I thought this was a great issue. Ends up being a fantastic story. Ends up tying all these things together with Merlin and all this Arthurian history, along with some other history throughout British culture. And I think he did a really good job. It looks amazing. Yeah, and I actually think he calls it out in the book at some point where like he says, like it's kind. Of, I think you guys may be confused at this point, maybe. I think it's actually a line of dialogue when you're reading it. It's something along those lines. But yeah, um, I really feel like the way this issue was narrated, you get the splash pages of art. You may get two panels a page but it's all it's all just captions there's no dialogue and i i really like that i really think that's the way this story should have been you know just just splash pages two panels three panels and then just captions and um it was really really good re a really solid wrap up i am like you i am very surprised he was able to wrap this up as well as he did uh art art is amazing you know if you're gonna get this for anything just look at the art he, he is god level when it comes to art now and uh, you guys do have to check this series out. Please do. Starhenge, it is fantastic. If you're interested in Stonehenge and Arthurian legend all being kind of mixed together with some of the best art you'll ever see, this is absolutely the comic book for you. Obviously, the visual issues are out, but hey, maybe you want to pick it up and trade. You will proudly put this on your bookshelf and be happy to have it there. Anyone you show this to are going to understand that this is world-class level art. Let's go over to something that maybe doesn't have that good of art. But it has a really good story here. Ice Cream Man number 33, also from Image Comics. W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo. There's a lot of introspection in here. You mentioned narration during Starhenge. There's very interesting narration in this story. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's W. Maxwell Prince narrating the story and trying to explain that maybe he started trying to tell a positive, happy story. But he always ends up going to this really dark place. And you get the two stories kind of side by side from these two different perspectives. And maybe the the inner conflict within W. Maxwell Prince and why he can't tell a happy story. This was my pick of the week. I thoroughly enjoyed this. And uh, like you said, I agree. This was narrated by W. Maxwell Prince. He tells us, the reader, the types of stories he wants to write. You know, he, he wants to write superheroes. He wants to write positive and uplifting stories. But that's not what comes out from him. He doesn't have that in him. Clearly, if you've ever read a page from the series, yeah, you understand. But uh, from, for an example, he writes about a man named Brad and what he wants to write about with Brad, what he wants to do with him. But what then what actually comes out from him, it is clearly the opposite. There's, yeah, no happy endings here. But, and, and you know, some writers just can't do those stories. Like, uh, that's not a bad thing. You know, like writers at Marvel, they love to write people eating food. 
I can't do that. That's not in me, you know, but um, regardless, this is a really damn good issue. And another strong recommend from this series. This is yeah, one of um, image comics, best books right now. W Maxwell Prince is a terrific writer. Please do check this out. I'm starting to think about using the word genius. When I talk about W Maxwell Prince, he's on that kind of level when it comes to narration, building the story together and making it really work. Now, if you like W Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo, they actually had another comic book come out this week. The debut of Art Group number one, it wasn't really publicized all that well, so I didn't even know that they were doing it until you told me you were recommending it. The other interesting thing is when we did some research on this after the fact, this actually came out from Boom Studios, I think back in 2018, as a graphic novel. So this is this predates Ice Cream Man, but I think they've gone back and they're doing some updates and tweaks with it now. But um, yeah, this is really fun and really good. Yeah, so the Mona Lisa in the Louvre is suddenly <laughs> winking, and they need the, the art brute to come in and fix it. Um, there's a symbol of a winking face that's popped up in numerous homicide cases across the U.S. that match the Mona Lisa. And that's all I'm going to say about the plot. It, I will say this. I had so much fun reading this. It, it's so clever, creative irreverent just like what you get from ice cream man and this gets when well, one gets my highest recommend recommends for the week you will not see any of this coming and i love it for that definitely if you have not gotten on the w maxwell prince bandwagon i say do that quick he's a superstar in the making he's very good when it comes to comic books and obviously art brute apparently it came out before from boom studios it's coming out in serialized format definitely check that one out you have another big recommendation for image i think this is the final one Shirtless Bear Fighter Volume 2, issue number five from Jody Lehep and Nil Vendril. Once again, I I can't help but laugh my ass off every time I read this series. Granted, it's it's filled with bear puns, but you know what? They're so well executed and so well used. It, it, it it's hysterical. It, it what we what has what's happened to the human race in this issue and what the humans have to endure on all fronts from all types of bears including the self-care bears you got me hook line and sinker i love it i, I this is, gets the strong another one gets the strongest of recommends from the week another team of creative uh, writers and artists image killed it this week with writers and artists and their creativity and originality please do seek these books out guys very much great counter programming from marvel and dc i would say that image absolutely pants dc and marvel with the quality of the books that they actually published this week DC and Marvel just came up short. In fact, we don't have anything from DC that we're going to recommend in this video. But you do have one recommendation from Marvel Comics. You're recommending Savage Avengers number eight, David Pepos and Carlos Magno. Yeah, so it took eight issues, but I can finally recommend this series. I wanted to recommend this from the beginning because technically this, this is a series I should be behind hook, line, and sinker. Um, you got Carlos Magno in the art. But David Pepos, in the past, in the past seven issues, he's just been, you know, more or less hindering Carlos Magno with all of his dialogue, his Claremont-esque abundance of dialogue. And it's just, you're killing Carlos Magno's art. But in this issue, it was solid. We get the Savage Avengers and uh, Doom, Doom 2099 versus Ultron in, in 2099. What happens in this, it, let's just say it doesn't go too well at all in, in any way, shape, or form for the Savage Avengers. It is terrific. Art is great by Carlos Magno, but once again, there's a, there's a tad bit too much dialogue in next position from um, David Pepos, but it is still a solid recommend. Art is fantastic. Great cliffhanger at the end. I cannot wait to come back for issue nine. Well, thank God Marvel produced something that we could recommend, or it would have been just like the best image comics of the week. They produce so much good quality comic books across the board, but look out for next week because we know DC and Marvel are going to come back. We do know Deceased is coming out, and maybe a little... A little hint there that you might want to pick up Deceased next week. Now, Drew, you're working with Merck Publishing these days. Is there anything people should have the, their eye out for? What's happening there? Yes. Yeah, so uh, this month, we got, I think, Miss Meow number five and six are going to be out. B Born of Blood number two is going to be reprinted. Number three is going to be reprinted again. Uh, issue four will be coming out, uh, not this week, but next week after. There's going to be a lot of books coming out here toward the end of the month. And we have a big... and. It'll be a big, big announcement coming from Born of Blood toward the end of the year. Stay tuned, guys. Merck Publishing has a lot of big plans coming up. I hope we were able to help you find a comic book worth reading this week. It was a little bit of a slim pickings type of week, but Image Comics absolutely brought it. Unfortunately, DC and Marvel did not. If you're looking for some more thinking critical content, and you're like, I don't even know what to watch next. Well, YouTube has looked at your viewing history and the videos that I've created, and they said 
This is the video I made for you. The perfect video from Thinking Critical for you as a personal viewer. Definitely check this out if you want some more Thinking Critical.